Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today out here in the shop, I got my friend uh, Keith Hubbard out here with me. You've probably seen him in some of my videos in the past. And with me having hurt my hand, he volunteered to come down and give me a hand here for a couple of days, literally give me yeah. a hand. <laughs> so he's going to be my left-hand man, <laughs> so to speak. Well, the funny thing is I kind of slightly hurt the right hand, but it's not too bad. Yeah. It was just a slip on the ice, but I'll be good uh, to yeah. work. Good deal. So anyway, we got I'm, a full set of hands between I mean, us. Yeah, between the two of us, we got a full set of hands. So, uh, and, and speaking of the hands, I did go to the doctor this morning. They re-X-rayed everything. He says it's healing up great. He gave me the go ahead to take the brace off. He said, you know, be careful with it. Don't overdo it. Don't be picking up anything heavy or anything like that for probably another four weeks. So, uh, but he said I was okay to go back and, and use it with using some common sense, which may be sketchy around here, but <laughs> <laughs> hopefully we'll keep from rehearting it. But I'm gonna be taking advantage of Keith the next couple of days and let him kind of do my heavy lifting. And today, uh, one of the things that I've kind of been wanting to get some help here for anyway, because it's gonna be a two person job, is a while back, I think I shared this, I picked up this uh, electric hoist, uh, chain hoist, and I wanna put it over on my uh, jib crane. And I actually found this one, Forbes Matthews, who's a viewer of the channel, friend of mine. I've known him for quite some time up in the, well, he's south of the Atlanta area, a uh, good bit south of the Atlanta area. And I, I wouldn't even call him in the Atlanta area, but a lot closer to Atlanta than I am. But he found this at an auction, I think, and he gave me a call and they say, hey, you'll need a bid on this. And I'm like, absolutely. So he was able to purchase this at a reasonable price. I don't remember what we paid for it, a couple hundred bucks. It wasn't too bad. Um, but I want to get it over there on the jib crane. I know that this is currently wired, it's three phase, it's a three phase uh, hoist, and I know that it's currently wired for high voltage, so for 480 volts. I'm running on 240 volts in my shop. So I need to break into this and change the wiring around to get it on the low voltage. This is a dual voltage motor, but you gotta do some wiring in there, we'll probably show that. And then the other thing we gotta do is there's a, uh, you know, can't see it right now, but there's a, a, ho a reel for the, the electrical cord so that as you pull that out, the cord just kind of retracts back and forth. And I got to make a bracket to mount up onto the jib crane to mount that on, get that bolted in place, and then we got to get all this put up there. So anyway, that is something that Keith is going to be helping me out on, and you'll be seeing him throughout here. So I think what I'm going to start out with, uh, Forbes actually, when he got this, he plugged it into his system, which he's on 480 volts up there where he's at, and it worked great but uh, I do need to get the, the voltage change around. That's gonna be the first thing I do. Then we're gonna make the bracket and then sometime over the next day or two while Keith is here, we'll get this thing mounted up there. We got a couple place. of days to work. Absolutely, so there you go. Let's, uh, we'll get at it. So one of the first things we need to do here, guys, is uh, this is the cord reel and there's a little plate in there that mounts to something. I wanna get that plate off so that we can see about getting this thing properly mounted up there. You want me to get a regular size wrench for you? What's I think that? it's it's four, so it's probably fine. Okay. Of course, it's got. Yeah, just undo those those wires right there. It's only got three wires. We'll have to put a ground in there somewhere. There is a ground. Yeah, it's got a ground, but it wasn't connected to anything. We'll fix that when we put it back up there. All right, good deal. Okay, so I'm thinking that the connections are gonna be right in here. So we're gonna pull this end off. If not, we may have to pull the other end off, but let's see what we can come up with here to change the wiring. One thing that I'm not real crazy about on this is that it doesn't look like there's a ground going to the actual um, head up here. This is a three wire and it's, all three wires are hot. I may change this cord out and put a ground in here because you could have something going on here where we have, you know, some power wire. going through your chain. Yeah. Well, there is a green wire in there. It's just not hooked up to nothing. So maybe we can fix that inside the down here. We'll we'll figure it out. But there is a there is a, a ground wire in here because I got a green wire here. Yeah. So um, although the insulation on it is kind of maybe it got lost or. 
Yeah, yeah. something. We'll, we'll figure it out. The reel might have, might have been wired for it. We'll figure Interesting. it out. Interesting. Let me uh, let me get in here and figure out what's going on, and we'll we'll bring bring you guys back. Let me just kind of show what we did. The nine wires from the motor are kind of all coming in right here, and they are labeled on the wires T1 through T9. On a three-phase motor, you typically have nine leads coming out of the motor, and depending on how you tie all those wires together, it's either gonna be running on low voltage or high voltage. And there's a tag over here on the motor, and uh, this is pretty much standard with most three-phase motors. Basically, it kind of looks like this. So again, you got your leads in there. It was wired up where four and seven were tied together, five and eight were tied together, six and nine were tied together, and then one, two, and three went actually to the, uh, uh, the, the motor controls or whatever. So um, what I did is we basically redid this where four, five, and six are tied together. And the way we did that is they had this bus bar in here, and one of them had three terminals on there, so I got this all three of them, so they're tied together with spade bits. And then one and seven are tied together here, going into one side, two and eight, three and nine. And then the lead over here goes over into the controls to actually um, control everything. So we just basically had to unplug everything and plug it back up in the right order so that it would work on the low voltage versus the high voltage. So now I think what I'm gonna do is we're gonna put a plug on this and I'm just gonna check it out, make sure I got everything wired up right before we go hanging this thing up so I can do it all down low rather than up high. So as long as we're working on this, I am going to replace this uh, SO cord in here that's going out to it. And the reason is, as you look, it's just kind of crunchy. There's places in here where these wire, the wire uh, coating is just cracked. Like that right there, every time it bends, it's just old and cracked. It's all, I've seen, I've noticed that in several places. I'm just gonna replace it all. You can see the ground wire is kinked over. So we're gonna replace all that and I'll probably go ahead and replace these leads. And I don't know why there's not a ground lead going up to connect to the incoming wires, but we're gonna fix that while we're fixing everything else. So I think we're gonna make a run to town. I gotta get some wire and we'll go ahead and swap that out while we're at it. All right, I think we got everything wired up here. In fact, I know we do because I've tested it out. So basically I got my new cord coming in here with nice fresh terminals that aren't crispy crunchy. Uh, notice here on the white lead, white normally designates a neutral, uh, whereas we're putting power through that lead and for three phase low voltage, your hot wires are black, red, and blue. So we just put some blue electrical tape on there to designate that that is indeed a hot wire and not a neutral wire. A lot of these SO cords have black, red, white, and green for ground. And again, we just, we don't have a neutral, so we changed that to a hot. Ground's coming over up underneath the bottom. We got the ground running through the whole system. Uh, I went ahead and made sure we had all that going. Again, the nine wires coming out of the motor, I showed you how we changed those over to get them swapped out. I came over and tried it out and I noticed it was, it was trying to work, but it wasn't working. It kind of scratched my head. And then I realized, oh, you dummy. Uh, you have control voltage that controls the, the uh, relays and the switches up here in the motor starter, which is, this is the motor starter on this right here. And these happen to be 24 volt coils in them. Uh, and whenever we went from high voltage to low voltage, it goes to a transformer to, to convert the, you know, it was set to convert 480 volts to 24 volts through this transformer right here. But when we cut the input power in half, we were only putting out 12 volts instead of 24 volts, and that wasn't enough to get these coils to work properly. So we had to do some rewiring on the transformer as well. And, um, it's pretty straightforward as well. It is pretty standard. This is kind of your wiring diagram for a transformer. For 480 volts, there's, there's four leads that come out of one side. That are usually, they were, almost all of them I see are marked H1, H2, H3, and H4. And you see you got power going into H1. You put a jumper between H2 and H3 and you got power coming to H4 and that'll take you 24 volts. But when we go to 240 volts, we have to do a little bit different. We got power coming in H1 with a jumper going to H3 power coming in H4 with a jumper going to H2, and then that will give you 24 volts. So I did that basically. Here's the four volts, and we were able to go through the uh, 
the block over here to get it where it was pro wired properly and it is wired properly now and it works just fine. So let me, let me give you an example here. So I got the pendant here. You can see the uh, hook and we'll just go up with it. There it goes up and down. And fortunately, it was wired up right to begin with where the up is going up and the down is going down. If for some reason you had put it together and it was going backwards, I would just need to swap any two of my incoming three-phase leads and that will reverse the motor. So, but this, you kind of got a 50-50 chance of whether you get it right uh, the first time. And uh, we got lucky this time. I didn't have to do that. So anyway, this is ready to go. We're gonna button this back up and uh, we got all the electrical work pretty much done. Now I just need to get it mounted over on the crane and we'll be doing that coming up soon. So that little power reel that we've got, it mounts to this plate and this plate is going to mount to this plate and we're going to mount this up on top of the I-beam on the, on the crane. So I just found a piece of quarter inch plate over in my scrap pile and we cut it out on the bandsaw. Didn't show any of that, but uh, just to give it a mounting plate. And like I said, we're gonna get up there and actually bolt that to the top of the I-beam. This will be kind of cantilevered out. This is the bottom side and that reel just, will just mount to this. So right now I got it clamped down where I want it. I need to transfer my holes for the, to drill the holes to mount this to the plate. And to do that, again, I've got transfer punches. I got a whole set of these in fractional sizes and uh, you just go find your hole. That's the same diameter of that hole that I'm in there so that when I tap this, I'm putting a center punch right there where I need to drill that out. So now I can go to my drill press and just drill those holes out. And when I do, they should match up. So we're gonna do that next. So kind of picking up where we left off, uh, we got this plate, got the four holes drilled out in it. I went ahead and got it painted. I will just note this hole in the center, that was just in the piece of metal, not needed for anything, but not worth worrying about either. We're gonna go ahead and uh, get the plate that the whole reel attaches to mounted on here. And before I do, I need to think about which way it needs to go. Let me figure that out real quick and we'll get that bolted down. All right, I think I want it going just like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll just get some bolts up through here. All right, that's got that tightened down. And uh, the whole reel just will come up on here and then we'll wire in the wires. I will note that the ground, we did check the ground and it's grounded through the hose, hose reel and we checked it for continuity uh, from the end down here to the end coming up on the other end and we did have continuity on that ground. So that was how this is grounded. It's just to the plate itself and it goes through the whole, whole hose reel and into the wire. So we're good there. All right, um, I think I need to shorten my cord here a little bit. I need to figure out how long that needs to be and put my plug on it. And this will be ready to mount up onto the beam. So I noticed on here, it's got a place here to put in some fluid and it says use uh, Dextron automatic transmission fluid. While we're working on this, we're just gonna go ahead and change that out. There's a plug right here. I'm not sure. I'm gonna get it out, I think. This may be the fill line. I'm gonna see if there's any oil that comes out of this. There's another plug in the bottom. Um, yeah, just hold it right there. This is probably to drain it. I think this is the one you're gonna fill it to. Yeah, it's nothing coming out of it. So we'll pull the one on the bottom now and drain whatever's in there. All right, hold it right there. And there ain't much coming out of it. We'll let that drain. So I'm glad we've checked that because that was, for all intent purposes, empty. So let me put this plug back in there. All 
All right. And we will fill her back up. We'll just fill it up until it starts coming out that little side piece and that should be the fill line. Guys, I thought we'd wrap up the jib crane here. We've got the crane now that you saw us kind of get it all serviced and ready to go, got it mounted. And I didn't get any on video. Keith did the work. We, <laughs> I had a little uh, man hoist and we were able to put that on the front or man uh, lift and we were able to put that on the front of the skid steer and I just picked him up and we was able to get up there and do it. So basically you see the cord drill is just kind of cantilevered off the top. We've just drilled a couple of holes up there with the mag drill bolted that plate to the top of the I-beam and uh, that uh, retracts so whenever the the cord goes in, well it hung up right there, but it does go in and out. Uh, may have to adjust that a little bit. To, you upgrade the wire. Yeah, the, it just needs to come down a little bit to get do it right, but it's it's working fine and then the up and down it's working fine too, so you hang on, you're going up. Oh, I know. There it goes. <laughs> um, I do want to, I'm just gonna shorten this chain up a little bit. I wanna raise this up just a little bit higher so I get the ladder out. It's got an adjuster on the chain yeah, box. Yeah, it's got an adjuster up there that we can just lift that up. I don't want to, I'll just probably put a zip tie on the cord to kind of tie it up there or whatever. But yeah, it's pretty much usable like it is. This is a one ton, 2000 pound, uh, jib crane and the hoist of course is labeled rated for one ton which is perfect uh the chain fall that we had on there was actually rated for a ton and a half never did understand that's the chain fall that came with it never really understand why they put a ton and a half chain fall on a one ton uh crane but whatever you know uh, <laughs> i guess it yeah as long as you didn't pick up more than you're supposed to it didn't matter but anyway, there you go. I got to see it through beginning to end. I broke ground and then yes, right. got you were here. Up. You were here when we installed the whole thing. So that's, well, I was here to cut the concrete with you. That's right. So uh, yeah, I'm, this, this kind of gets this project to fruition now. I'm, I'm happy with it. Uh, I did run the three-phase power. There's just an outlet up in the ceiling up there with a twist lock plug in it. So we shortened that cord a little bit. And yeah, it's good to all go. Done. All good to go. Big major improvement. I want to thank my friend Forbes Matthews, who is up in uh, middle Georgia. And he actually, like I said, I think I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it's been a couple of days since we did it, but he found this at a at an auction and bought it on my behalf. And uh, he gave me a call and said, hey, this thing's coming up. How much you want to pay for it? And we worked out a deal and he got a really, I don't remember what I paid, but it was a really good deal on it. He picked it up for me and I went up and got it from him several months ago. So glad to have this done. Keith, thank you very much. It's always fun. Yeah. He's been my left hand man while I'm dealing with my broken hand here and uh, has really helped out. And he's not through yet. We got, we got some more stuff to do with him. Yep, so. Just a bit more. So anyway, all right, guys, with that, that's a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Thumbs up, comments, always greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. Uh, as always, a big, huge thank you to those who support the site financially through Patreon, PayPal, et cetera. It really does help out a lot. And uh, with that, guys, we're going to sign off. We'll get out of here. We'll catch you on the next video. As always, thanks for watching.